We're missing one. Yes. So he's not coming. No. I can start. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, good morning, um, everybody. Uh, we are ready to start. Uh, maybe I'll just ask the lady if she can close the door for us just to cut out the external noise. Thank you so much, and uh, good morning to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, our next panel is going to be discussing um, Africa's public equity markets and asking the question, is this an exceptional entry point? Uh, quite looking forward to that, knowing that Africa is a very diverse continent with many very different uh, market practices. And um, this panel will be uh, moderated by Mr. Sam Mukorosi, who is the head of deals and origination at the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, the JSE. And the JSE is Africa's largest and most liquid exchange. Sam looks after the primary markets which originate listings across debt, equity, and specialized securities, like the ETFs, the exchange traded funds. He's also responsible for JSE private placements, which is a new fund raising platform which can be used by unlisted companies and infrastructure projects for raising debt and equity capital. He is a seasoned financial services executive with over 20 years experience covering corporate finance advisory, private equity and debt capital markets. And he has successfully executed transactions worth over two billion. And um, over to you, Sam. I'm hoping we're gonna have a bit more time after the panel discussion to be able to take maybe two or three questions from the audience. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much for that uh, warm introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for joining us on uh, this conversation around uh, public equity markets. Um, my esteemed panelists here include uh, Mr. Uh, Tapelo uh, uh, Tole. Um, uh, Mr. Tole is uh, the CEO of the um, Botswana Stock Exchange uh, with over 20 years in uh, financial markets, um, holding a uh, master's uh, from the University of Botswana, um, as well as uh, from Rhodes University, um, as well as a, a, a third master's, I believe, uh, from the University of um, Cape Town. Um, very nice to, uh, uh, to have you, uh, Tapelo. Thank you. Um, next to him is um, Brendan Lalou. Um, Brendan works at uh, uh, Africa's largest asset manager, the Public Investment Corporation of course managing uh, funds on behalf of the uh, South African Government Employees Pension Fund and other um, uh, government clients. Um, he is in a deal, he's got uh, experience in deal origination, investment research, financial modeling, etc. cetera. Um, and um, uh, Brenton, I believe that uh, over and above uh, holding uh, an MBA and experience uh, in uh, Citibank, uh, you are also studying for your PhD, so um, all, all the best uh, with that. Um, Andrew uh, Schultz is um, Andrew Schultz is the head of Frontier Markets at Investec. Um, he has over 10 years in dedicated Frontier Markets experience, um, covering uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, ex-South Africa, um, and he has been uh, in the stockbroking uh, industry uh, for for a number of years, and uh, he also includes um, his his uh, qualifications include a BCom and uh, an MBA. Um, Andrew, maybe we'll start with you just to give us a sense of uh, the market where you sit from an equity markets perspective. What are you seeing as Investec um, across the continent? Thanks very much, Sam. Um, I need the short answer to the, to the original question that, that was posed for, for the panel is, is it an exceptional entry point? And the answer is yes. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of detail that we can go into that on, on that. But we have seen a fairly marked sell down in the, in the valuations of uh, virtually across the continent. Over the, last, over the last decade, while the S&P um, 
S&P um, indexes P multiple has effectively doubled or come close to doubling um, on earnings growth of a touch over 100% over that time. The rest of Africa, also Africa XSA multiple has gone from a PE of about 13 and a half to sub 10. So about down about 26%, while earnings have also doubled. So we have got a lot cheaper but there's been a marked exodus of money as the S&P has outperformed and, and done very well. There's been a flow of capital globally from frontier and emerging markets into a small number of stocks. We're seeing this unwind at the moment, mm -hmm. but it has been, been a very, very hard trend for the rest of Africa. But what that has meant is that there are very good companies that, that give, you, give you great exposure strong underlying earnings and um, cracking management teams, to be honest. Uh, they, they really are very good at making the most of what's been a tough situation. Mm. Um, that is largely what we're seeing. By the way, the hot money has left the continent. Mm. The dedicated investors left. Right. Mm. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Um, Brenton, from your side, just some opening comments. I know that you look after both uh, listed markets as well as unlisted markets um, from a PIC perspective. What, what are you seeing across the continent? Sure. Thank you, Sam. Good morning. Good morning, team. Um, so what we're seeing on the continent, we're seeing pressure on earnings from a global perspective, from a weaker monetary and fiscal policy perspective, um, as well as that, that all ends up into high inflation, which has a risk of margin squeeze. So essentially, from an asset management point of view, we're seeing a generational shift from a low interest environment to a high interest, low, low inflation to high inflation environment. And what that, that does to our asset allocation over the long term, it, it squeezes margin with, in terms of the listed equities. We're seeing a marked shift between global investors on the African continent, for example, the Nigerian Stock Exchange, pre-COVID, um, there was 50%, sub 50% investors from outside of the continent. It's being it's reduced now to under 15%. So there is a mark shift between local investors and international investors on the continent. What we'd like to see, though, is we're looking for companies and sectors which long-term themes and long-term resilience to those macro and external factors. Um, for example, we've seen the tech industry really rally during the pandemic during the pandemic and might overshoot earnings at the moment. Yeah. In terms of energy, we see energy sectors struggle a bit and high margins being quite volatile recently. But that in turn, that looks to, might have better earning potential, commodity price rallies, etc. Um, I think I'll leave it there for now, Sam. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Brenton. Um, Tapeli, you're not just the CEO of the Botswana Stock Exchange, but also um, heading up the alliance of SADC uh, stock exchanges. Maybe just give us a view on, on what's happening in your view uh, from a Botswana perspective, but also a broader uh, SADC perspective in terms of um, the equity markets. Yeah, thank you. Good, uh, good morning. Uh, if you look at Botswana, uh, you realize that we have about 33 listed stocks and most of the 33, I think 24, are domestic companies. And out of the 24 domestic companies, there are a number of companies that have used Botswana as a, as a base uh, to expand their services into the, in, into the rest of Africa, uh, mainly because of the, 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 the comparative and competitive advantages that they enjoy in Botswana. And I think most of these companies have been able to grow uh, and pay out some nice steady dividends uh, over, a period of, over a period of time. And I think uh, uh, if you look at even the domestic index total return, I think uh, it's been up this year at about 11%. 11 and uh, we have some share prices rising as much as about 40%. Uh, so I think, uh, uh, and we have had some, some entry uh, into the market, uh, a significant number of uh, uh, foreign players. But uh, as you might be aware, uh, Botswana export really about 70% of its capital also outside so uh, the, the that 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 the, the liquidity problem that is in the country 
is because the pension fund industry relative to the investments in the country uh, it's, 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 it's relatively big. Uh, but if you look at the, the, the SADC uh, 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 itself, I mean, there are, there are 14 stock exchanges in SADC uh, from 16 countries. Uh, some stock exchanges are, are smaller, but I, I don't think investors are looking for, for the sizes of the stock exchange. Investors are looking for returns in, 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 in respective markets and in, in the exchanges. And therefore, I think clever investors have been able to identify opportunities in respective markets and then be able to make some returns. But of course, as, a, as SADC and also as, as, a, as, as Africa, uh, as the Vice President of uh, African Stock Exchanges, you know, we have seen uh, some or majority of the, the projects we are doing coming together. But like in SADC, we have recently launched a, a, a green uh, finance program that is uh, financed by, by FOSD. Uh, what it basically does is that, you know, it, it formulated some uh, uh, green finance uh, listing guidelines for, for the SADC region. And therefore, it made it simpler for, for, for markets that want to, to list such product to, to be able to, to just uh, uh, get the principles and then domesticate them to, to the market. And we are seeing uh, some, some work in, in, in that regard. And then also at the, at the African continent, uh, we have the, the Africa Exchanges Linkages Project, mm -hmm. uh, which involves about uh, nine exchanges now uh, who are going to be, to be interconnecting uh, to be able to, to trade with, uh, among, among each other, which I think is one of the things that are the, the, if, if developed further, it can actually unlock a lot of liquidity in, in, the, in the African continent. Thank you, thank you, gentlemen. Um, just a note that uh, we, we will be taking uh, some questions um, in about 10 minutes' time, so uh, uh, keep those questions uh, rolling in your mind. Um, maybe just before I go back to the panelists, uh, a view of where the equity markets currently sit within the South African context. So um, the JSE is about a trillion dollar market cap uh, exchange from, a, from an equity perspective. We have around uh, 300 listed companies. Of those, about a third are either uh, dual listed or um, have, uh, in, are incorporated offshore. Um, from a, a revenue, uh, from, a, from a, a liquidity perspective, we, we trade about a billion dollars in, in trade uh, over time, uh, uh, in, in, in a single day. What was interesting for me in the first panel this morning was also a comment around domestic investors as opposed to just sort of international investors. So we see about 30% trade activity on the JSE being from offshore, um, primarily uh, coming out of London, um, and then 70% and then of that is, is local. And what we've seen with some of the uh, turmoil this year is that um, in, the court, in, in quarter one of, of 2022, with um, the war in Ukra Ukraine, we saw actually um, a foreign interest coming into the market. And so we actually saw um, good buying opportunity from both, uh, for both our equity and debt market um, in, in, on the JSE. And then we've seen a little bit of a turnaround of that. Um, like, like Andrew said, uh, you know, some of, uh, some of the... Uh, that the hot money um, has left a little bit in sort of Q, Q2 and Q3 um, as the inflation uh, story started to take uh, precedence um, specifically in the US and, and increased uh, rates in the US uh, pushing the dollar upwards and, and, and kind of a, a flight to, to safety as it were. And so that's just an interesting um, opportunity. Um, maybe back to uh, my colleagues on the stage and, and we'll go this way um, a little bit. Uh, so let's talk about the future of African uh, equity markets and, and, and Tapella, maybe we can just unpack a little bit more around um, the Africa Linkages Project which has been a project to say um, let's make it easier for investors coming from overseas to have exposure to, to various markets um, whether it's JSE, Egyptian Stock Exchange, Nairobi Stock Exchange, how do we help investors coming from um, developed markets from the rest of the world 
into uh, into the African opportunity um, with with ease. Yeah, thank you. I think the, the Africa Exchange Linkages Project is one of the uh, the best initiatives out of uh, uh, store exchanges in Africa. Uh, there, are, there, are, there are seven exchanges now that are on stage one of uh, uh, interconnecting, being Egypt, Morocco, uh, BVRM, which is a group of about seven countries in West Africa, Nigeria, uh, Kenya, um, Mauritius, and, and South Africa. And then that's, that's stage one, but we have since had Botswana and Ghana also joining the project. Uh, the project is just to have uh, 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 brokers in Africa to be able to place orders in, 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 in other market, but of course through uh, some local brokers. So we are basically interconnecting all the markets in, in Africa. And I think this also will help uh, to actually lift the stature of uh, 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 other African markets because I mean, the, the, the level of development, although it's different in our African markets, you realize that this project will basically tend to uplift in terms of market conventions, some of the other, 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 other smaller exchanges. And it will not only open up opportunities for, for foreign market participants who can choose to go through any particular country, but I think it will also open up intra-African uh, uh, trading. Because uh, uh, trust me, there's a lot of money in Africa that tend to to just be trapped in uh, 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 specific countries. So I think this project itself, I think, is able to be able to open up a, a lot of uh, uh, other other opportunities in, in 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 other African countries. Because if you can look at, I mean, you look at uh, a market like Botswana, for example, uh, the the pension fund is about three times more than the size of the the, the exchange. I mean, there's, there's, there's excess money in the, in the economy to be, to be invested somewhere else. There's too much money in South Africa and, and, and the rest of the other African countries. And therefore, I think as these opportunities are going to be opening up, I think the, 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 there's potential uh, liquidity improvement in, in respective market. And also, I think uh, uh, when, when we come together as African stock market, I think that is when now we can be able to influence policies. Uh, uh, among some Af African leaders in order to open up their, their, their capital markets. Indeed, thank you. Uh, thank you, Tapel. I think, I think that if we can get that right, um, I think we need to be opening up liquidity and opening up the trade across the continent um, and, and through that linkages. Um, Brenton, a lot of the um, capital held in Africa is... Um, is held by government pension funds, um, and, 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 and some of the, um, the criticism has been that a lot of that capital is, is stuck in <laughs> government bonds um, as a, and not finding its way into uh, equity markets and, and onto the exchange. Maybe just a comment from your side on that statement, um, and, and maybe just a, a, a comment as well, you as an investor, investing across the continent, um, what, what would you like to see? If you could wave a magic wand, what would you like to see in terms of um, that opportunity to invest in equities um, across the exchange? Thank you, Sam. So essentially, pension funds in Africa are the bedrock to having strong equity markets. And I qualify that statement um, as such that a lot of the capital is flowing through the financial value chain, what are we looking at at, at the PIC? is trying to get some of the unlisted entities that we invest in, whether it's impact investing or private equity, right up to financial close and listing. Uh, we've done it successfully once or twice on the continent, but more initiative needs to be, needs to be done. There are certain barriers that, that are in the continent, and if we look at it at a holistic level, if we look at the, a pyramid structure, and at the bottom of the pyramid is infrastructure, one of the deep um, core uh, barriers to entry into the African um, investment market. Once we can get the infrastructure right, we might be able to industrialize a bit better. And I talk about industrialization as a broad concept. If you look at demographics and literacy levels and urbanization rates on the continent, that, those are exponentially increasing considerably. Um, and and it, it looks like um, China in the 1990s very similar stats 
and it's growing exponentially. The scale is, is definitely um, growing quite fast. If we can get the industrialization right and add value internally, I think Africa now is ready for the all elusive inter regional, inter Africa trading blocks. Um, and that will cause greater inclusive and sustainable growth within Africa. Mm. But what's core to that is development of financial markets, development of financial development in Africa. Um, we look at some, some of the barriers to, for foreign investors entering is the liquidity, is the lack of financial development of those markets. And I think from developing the unlisted side towards greater listings, last year we saw there were more delistings on the African continent than listings, 24 in South Africa alone. Um, there's some, been some marking great initiatives on the continent, but I think opportunistic to opportunistically invest on the continent, we need to see Africa as 54 countries, um, different exchanges, and not as a continental play. Not mm -hmm. as a pan-African play, but individual investing into fundamentals of a company. There's, like Andrew said earlier, but money is gone. And this is where really the fundamentals of the companies and the resilient earnings of the companies show through. We've seen quite a bit of that. We've seen sectors that have high volatility and sectors that have low volatility with great earnings potential. Um, this is where we act and this is how we look at Africa as individual strategies across different markets. Thank you. Th thank you, Brenton. Um, you touched on, on infrastructure. What mm -hmm. we've seen on, on, on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange is that there's been good appetite. Um, Tapelo mentioned the Green Bonds program that is now a, a SADC framework. We have seen good appetite in that green bonds, as well as social bonds, um, as well as even um, as well as even um, sustainability-linked uh, bonds, which which were introduced uh, uh, earlier this this year. What's interesting for me, Andrew, is that that's all in the debt space. Um, in the equity space, where is the opportunity around? the sustainable development side, whether it's infrastructure, whether it's kind of social investment. Um, and, and maybe I'll, I'll, I'll squeeze in three questions in one for you. The other question for you is, um, our, so sustainability is the one question. Second question is, we are seeing private markets competing against equities. Um, Brendan, you mentioned um, some of the delistings. Um, we're seeing a lot of private equity, a lot of venture capital, in coming into Africa, um, and, 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 and do you think that's competing against listed equities, um, and, and how do we kind of keep both growing, right, so capital formation in, in private markets as well as, as public markets, and then, and then another competitor is of course um, European and American capital formation. So in the Nigeria uh, experience, for example, Lots of um, tech unicorns coming out of America, uh, out of out of Nigeria, but we're not seeing the capital formation happen there. We're seeing capital being raised from Silicon Valley in private markets, but we're also seeing um, African countries, African companies listing um, in the UK, for example, uh, in in New York, for example. Um, any thoughts around how we make capital formation a lot more competitive? on the African space. Um, lots of uh, points for you to ponder, Andrew. Sam, that, that's a long list of questions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, starting off with where we make the continent, how we, we become more competitive on the continent. We're seeing local pension manage, managers and asset managers increasing in their levels of sophistication. Um, if, you, if you took a look not too long ago at um, pension funds on the rest of the, well, across the continent, it was purely fixed income and held to maturity. So it was, it was never traded, the, the value just pulled nicely to par, there was no volatility, which does suit, suit pension funds very well, but you lost out on all of the equity upside. Um, we're seeing an increasing shift towards equities as the valuations have become and apologies, but stupidly cheap, where you're getting, getting dividend yields well into double digits in a number of markets. These, these 
are starting to, to displace the fixed income opportunities. That is pushing pension fund managers who are the, the large custodians of capital across the continent into the equity market. That makes, makes it very attractive um, for everybody else. It improves liquidity, the, the depth of the market improves. And as that happens, we can start looking quite, quite realistically at local capital raises. Um, the rush to raise money in developed markets yeah. is a double-edged sword. Um, often the, the companies and the environments are not quite as well understood in, in the US um, as they are call it, in, in Nigeria. Um, we, we've seen a number of listings of Nigerian-focused firms in, in the US. And there's extreme volatility there, whereas the underlying operations have been rock solid and growing. Mm. So there's a strong case to be made for, for local listings. But mm. to have that, we need, we need freedom in the, in the foreign exchange markets, where, which is an area that we're struggling in in a, in a number, of, number of countries. Um, and that's a, that's a discussion on its own. Um, and improved local liquidity. Um, you mentioned a billion dollars daily liquidity in South Africa. My, my number is one and a half. Mm. But the next biggest exchange on the continent is, is Egypt. That's round about $70 million a day. And then down to Nigeria, Kenya, and Kenya at about six or $8 million a day. So improving local liquidity will, will have a compounding effect on our ability to list companies locally. Um, and I'm, I'm a big believer in listing companies locally, not just for licensed operate reasons. Great, great. Um, I'm going to open it up to questions. Uh, we've got one question at the back there. Yeah, we're just getting your mic. <laughs> You don't mind just uh, giving us a name and the, oh, two questions at the back there, okay? Should I, should I kick off, Sam? Yes, go for it. Yeah, thanks, guys. That is um, quite useful. Just maybe, I mean, I think we've spoken a lot about um, the listing opportunity, but maybe comments from the panel from a, a delisting perspective in some of these markets like, um, you know, Egypt, uh, Nigeria, and Kenya. I mean, how, you know, how frequent are they? I mean, any just thoughts, general thoughts? Great. We'll take the second question as well. Hi, Rui Oliveira from Angola. Uh, I run an asset management business. So my question goes to all three, actually. Um, regarding institutional investors, so pension funds, um, insurance, into the private, uh, into the equity market. So we, in Angola, there's a sort of an issue where uh, our stock exchange is mostly on government bonds. Um, and what, but we just listed our first two companies. So there is an issue with liquidity, but more than just that, there's actually an issue with non-participation from the institutional investors. So maybe my question will go into, how do you sort of sort that out to really bring these institutional investors to the equity market, or even the uh, government bond market, which by the way in Angola, they're not also existent there. Um, so yeah, thank you. Sure. Um, maybe, Tapelo, you want to take the one around um, the second question around um, kind of activity in, in, in liquidity and, um, and getting kind of pension funds more active in, uh, on the stock exchange? Yeah, I think, I think it, it also brought us in terms of the, the relationship building with the uh, pension fund uh, uh, or institutional investors in the market, especially domestic market. Uh, Fortunately, I, I tend to know the other fundamentals in the, in the Angolan market. But I think most of, most of it mainly is market development, uh, uh, trying as much as possible to, uh, to really come to terms in terms of your relationship and your business development with the, with the investors. Because there are a number of reasons why they might not be, they might not be in, uh, uh, investing uh, 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 locally. But I think yeah, it has to do with, with uh, you reaching out to them, uh, trying to find out what might be the issues that surround that, right. uh, and, and also trying to, uh, uh, to, to really discuss some of the impediments that they might be there in, in, in terms of the, uh, the market. And I think they'll be open enough to, uh, to, to talk to you in terms of why are they not investing in the market, 
and, 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 and stuff like that. But it's unfortunate. I know majority of the, the African markets are actually dominated by uh, government yes. uh, 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 borrowing, where the government bond market end up crowding out the, yeah. uh, the, 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 the activities in the, in the market. Yeah. Brenton, maybe if I could ask you to touch on the delistings trend um, across the continent, but also if I can add my own question. I mean, is there a little bit of um, a, a kind of a challenge between governments needing borrowing mm. and the largest pot, pot of capital being government employees' pension funds? And so it's, it's just a lot easier to, to convince those pension funds to just uh, invest in government bonds mm. to the detriment of, um, of, of equity markets and, and, and private capital formation. Um, and, and, and maybe, so that was a statement. Maybe my question is how, any advice in, in, in terms of, you've convinced the largest government pension fund um, to invest actively in, in equities as the PIC. Um, any kind of learnings from there um, after you, you, meant, you talked to the, uh, to the delistings question? Sure, thanks, Sam. So, in terms of delistings in, in the continent, I think let's, let's flip, flip it a bit and look at listings and new listings. Last year we saw about eight new listings on the continent compared to the US, uh, which was over a thousand. Um, so, the, the, but there is interest in the continent. Those delistings are, are, might be a function of the current market conditions that, that's thrown the continent off a little bit, um, particularly in South Africa where we saw no listings in 2021. Um, but the way, the way the market is formed, um, we need to, I'm hesitant to use the word educate or, or use a bit of more fundamentals into those markets. Um, the African markets cost lots of opportunities on the unlisted side and the listed side. And just to bring it to your, your question, Sam, um, the, African, the African market is pension funds are traditionally um, safe investors. The risk appetite isn't as high as we need it to be. Um, at the PIC, we have a dual mandate of looking at financial returns and one that looks at developmental gains and social objectives as well. Um, so, and that's where the key lies into it. A lot of the institutional institutional money, institutional capital is sitting on top of a J-curve where there's safer returns there, not as punchier as um, what Africa development needs. Right. And a lot of the time we need to pull those capital down that J-curve to reach impact investing, private, private capital. A lot of the asset allocations moved from um, being more traditional to more unlisted bias. And it's, yeah. and it's a thing that's going on to develop those markets. No, excellent. We've got a question at the back and then another question in the middle here. Hi, my, my name is Kevin. Um, two, two questions, actually. I think you made reference um, earlier on about, you know, um, China uh, 30 years ago, uh, if you look at the data reference. Uh, but then the issue is, you know, China has been consistently growing by 10% every single year for three decades. And our continent, we're struggling to even reach 2.5%. So there's no creation of velocity of money. Then secondly, um, we've got so many stock exchanges on the continent and they sort of microscopic in a way. We talk about liquidity issues, you know, half a million dollar or a million dollar is nothing. How, don't you think we should actually leverage on the after and come up with a consolidated exchange, for example, like the JSC, for example, or the one in Cape Town could be a consolidated exchange for tech raising money, you know, from our capital markets, but through one exchange rather than being split between multiple? Uh, exchanges where you get really very low liquidity. We'll take the last question as well. I'm Charlie Robertson, Chief Economist of Renaissance Capital, but also just published a, a book this year, The Time Traveling Economist, which said that because of the debt crisis that is pretty well baked in for a lot of countries for the next few years, um, there's no choice except to go to equity if countries are going to raise their their savings and finance and, and try and get foreign finance in. Um, and I was curious about whether the panel agreed. Secondly then, related more specifically to Botswana, is there an effort to get included in the MSCI frontier index from you? Because at the moment Nigeria is a non-market because people can't get their money out and people are struggling to get their money out even of Kenya. So we're left with Morocco, Mauritius and 
Well, that's it in MSCI Frontier. It would be lovely to have a country as well run as Botswana <laughs> to be giving us a choice. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, uh, it's actually a right question because, I mean, uh, earlier, I mean, this year around July, as Botswana Stock Exchange, we decided to, to really take a tour of the US. Uh, because they've been coming to Botswana to, because uh, our largest foreign investors are from the UK and uh, the US. So we did a tour of the US market. And one of the, the things that explicitly came up of discussion is that we need to target towards the, getting into the MSE index. And uh, the, 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 we started working towards that this July uh, to look at a number of variables where we, we, we need to up our, our activities and our game in terms of uh, targeting getting, getting there. So I think yeah, uh, uh, we will definitely work towards that. And I think the, the, the other question the, in terms of the, 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 the main exchanges in Africa, I mean, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's one question that is much talked about, mm -hmm. but, but remember, you know, countries in Africa are also diverse. Some of the store exchanges in Africa are existing because, you know, the, the, the local environment is best served by, uh, by, the, by the local store exchanges, given the varying developments of uh, of the market. I mean, we, 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 we have the likes of the GSC, uh, which started in what, 1876. And some of the, the smaller store exchanges in, in Africa only started in late 2000. Uh, and, and really, I think uh, they are better placed uh, in terms of the level of their development to serve their, 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 their markets. But I think uh, we should appreciate that at least the Africa Exchanges Linkages project is the first step towards uh, probably something, something, something bigger, and also there are a lot of other projects that have been taking place, even in SADC. Uh, harmonization of listing rules and trading rules, uh, uh, where we harmonize towards Johannesburg, and therefore I think uh, we are we are sort of creating same standards, which will ultimately make it easier. Uh, should there be a case for just one uh, 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 entity, I think at least the groundwork would have, done, would have been done. But I think uh, it will take time. And also, you know, there are a lot of other uh, policies and laws outside, outside, outside exchange. Uh, exchange controls in many African countries uh, uh, and uh, uh, varying policies. So as, as Africa converge uh, 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 like they do in SADC, uh, I think also capital markets will get an opportunity to also, to also converge. Great. And then I think your question around growth, it's a, it's a fundamental question. Yeah. Um, and um, I think as capital markets uh, participants, we can help increase that velocity of money. And I think that um, what Brenton talked about in terms of getting institutional investors, which are dominated by government pension funds on the continent, I think it's important to go down that J-curve with a view around impact and not just return and and so um and and and, and Tapelo, you made a very good point about obviously there's there's regulations there's policy outside of the capital markets that will help um bedrock that growth and help support kind of that development of of capital markets so hopefully we're, we're at the beginning of of a great story to um to to, to kind of play catch up with uh global development and and, and growth uh, ladies and gentlemen, our time is up. It's been an absolute pleasure to, uh, to host this panel. Thank you very much uh, to my panelists and um, hope the rest of you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much.